Happy Memorial Day, guys. Obviously, big thank you to uh, everyone who has served, men and women who have served, providing us uh, our opportunity to have a hell of a day to bet on sports because we have one hell of a card coming up today. Game 7, Eastern Conference Finals, a lot of day, uh, day baseball going on. Coming off a really good weekend, five straight winning days, and another undefeated Sunday, John. These Sundays, uh, three of your last four Sundays coming in with the undefeated record. So uh, going well there as well. Yep, a little bit different yesterday. Uh, you guys that had to beat the bookie members, you know we bet 90% dogs. Uh, just saw value in two favorites. Uh, we, we went on the, the raise minus 125 yesterday. Uh, like I had said uh, in the preview, you just had uh, the best uh, the best team in baseball right now is the race. I don't think there's even a question about it. Mm-hmm. They're by far the best home team. Um, they were going to be going up against a pitcher that has not proved even he belongs at this level. Um, they crushed him yesterday. Not only that, they had a little bit of World Series revenge. Uh, you had a, a West Coast team playing at an 1130 start on getaway day. Uh, just just a great spot for them at, at a cheap at a cheap number, what I thought. Um but had to sweat it out. They were just leaving Fleming out there like like they didn't have a bullpen. I don't know why they didn't want to get uh, – anyway, so we take that W, have the Arizona Diamondbacks, another cheap favorite, minus one. Look, guys, you, I may lay favorites, but you'll you'll never see 160s. And one, if, I bet up, if I may lay a 160, I, I got to make the game over 200 if I'm laying 160. Um, but we will lay favorites. It's whatever, wherever the value is. So a value with the Diamondbacks. Uh, over the red, over the Red Sox yesterday. Red Sox a little bit similar, similar situation with Dodgers. Just going from the West Coast back to the East Coast. They've been on a long West Coast trip. Their final game, they'd won the first two games. Kelly, big pitching advantage um, uh, over Hauk. Uh, so I, I just didn't see why that number was that low. Arizona, another team, just not getting the respect. They have the third best record in the National League. This is a good, solid Arizona Diamondback team. When Galen and Kelly are on the mound, uh, hey, they, they, they got to be a favorite at home, and that's just the way it is. Um, so anyway, solid day, 2-0, but with two favorites. And as Ben mentioned, this is our third Sunday in the last four that we weren't actually undefeated. Um, great weekend. Uh, and got a nice run. Five straight days of winning, guys. Five straight days of winning baseball. 14 and 10 the last five days. It's a 58.3 winning percent. Uh, yeah, I had a ton of favorites. I had five favorites out of those 24 games. Uh, but again, our biggest favorite was a uh, minus 127 with the Brewers on a day that Peralta got his ass uh, handed to him. The uh, rest of it's like I said, guys, you don't, I don't bet favorites. You don't bet high numbers. You get value. You get value with the dogs, and that's what we do it. So great, great baseball weekend. Um I didn't have anything in the NBA game, but I mean, what a game! I mean, what crazy a game! game. Um, and we're here. We are down 3-0. Uh, as you, I'm sure you guys heard it a million times. No team in 150 tries has uh, come back from an 0-3 deficit to win a playoffs, a seven-game playoff series. Only three teams have even forced it prior to this to a game seven. Uh, so here we are, a tenth of a second later. And we already have a Miami-Denver uh, championship, NBA championship series. Uh, but no, uh, White tips in a shot. Just a crazy game. It's a, it's a, it's, it's, I believe it's a nine-point lead when Tatum hits the two free throws, about three minutes left in the game. Should be cemented away. Uh, Heat go on a 10-2 run, capped off by Butler's three free, the three free throws. Nope. And three seconds on the clock. But if they put it uh, almost a full second on the clock, which was needed for that tip, you know, that don't happen. Crazy game, exciting game. It was just uh, that, that whole that old game six, crazy swings, the whole series, crazy swings. And uh, like you said, with that run at the end, Duncan Robinson checked in with those last three minutes for that run. Very interesting to see what the minutes have. And for those of you guys who watched the live earlier, you guys saw me go on this a little bit ago. I, the, the plus minus, he had a plus seven in that game five. He had a plus eight in the game six, led the team in plus minus both games, comes in for that late game run. Um, his props might be worth a look tonight. And uh, I think if he's in, might see Miami keep this game a bit closer. We'll see if that's the case. Yeah, look, this is uh, just tough for me to see. Um, tough, tough spot for Miami. Uh, really tough. Game lead. Uh, you, you, can, you can feel the noose tightening around their neck uh, with each game. Uh, the first three games, Heat looked like they looked in the first series against the Bucks, scoring 120.6 points per game. 
last three games, they've been held to 99.7 points per game. Um, it, it correlates. Look, guys, it's all about playoff Jimmy. Playoff Jimmy, 37.6 points per game in that Buck series. He was unstoppable. Um, and that's what led to that victory. Comes back with 24.6 points per game in the Knicks series. And then in the first three games of this series, averages 26 points per game. Three wins. Last three games, 22.3. So you could see the matriculation yep. come down. Also, game six, five for 21 from the field. Uh, when you're out there playing 45, 46, 47 minutes every game, this mm -hmm. is going to wear on you. Looks like that's what's doing um, to Jimmy Butler at this time. On the other hand, Tatum, uh, four games and of the four of the six games, 30 plus points. And remember, 51 in game seven of the yep. seven sixes, uh, the series. So, Celtics to Tatum, Heat Miami. That's tough enough. Ben, tell them the referee situation. Yeah, Scott Foster is the lead official tonight. Uh, that's very bad for Miami, good for Boston. Uh, the Heat are two and 13 straight up, three and 12 against the spread. Their last 15 games with Scott Foster officiating in it. As far as Celtics, last 14 playoff games with him as the lead official, they are 11 and three against the spread. And Scott Foster had the highest uh, win rate for home teams against the spread this year in the regular season. This is uh, a referee trend that sticks there. And, you know, uh, Scott Foster's name is usually thrown in there when everyone tries to throw any you know, rig or scripted things. And so uh, game seven, uh, who knows, maybe, maybe NBA wants uh, Boston in the NBA finals. So we'll see. Well, it's uh, it's enough for me to only like Boston. I don't have a bet on this game. Uh, just I just think it's real tough for the Heat to even wrap their minds around. They were a tenth of a second away from already being the, the Eastern Conference champions. But now we got to go win in Boston. Uh, look, they won two of three up there last year. Uh, they won two of three this year. Uh, now they've got to do it again. And if they do it, they earn it. It's just I think it's a tough spot. Um, again, Butler just uh, looks like he's tiring. If they don't get playoff Jimmy, they can't win. Uh, yeah, Duncan Robinson's been looking good for them. He can give them something. Bam. It's playoff Jimmy to the rescue, or, or it's not. Uh, so the two stars, who'll show up? Uh, Tatum and Butler. I think that's who's going to get the W. Uh, let's see if they're aided by the officiating of Scott Foster. No. Um my lines, guys, as you know, I'm, my ratings is, is what it's all about. It's one of the things I take pride in, uh, besides just giving you my bets. Um, we also write a preview on every game. If you go to, go to the website or the app, How to Beat the Bookie, um, we, we give you not only our bets, a preview on every game. It's an in-depth preview. We talk about trends. We talk about the referee situation. Um, talk about what the teams, like Celtics are 11-8 and eight overall, just 5-5 five and five at home in this playoffs. Yeah. Uh, so not, not really getting the job done at home. Heat, on the other hand, um, where am I with the Heat? Miami Heat are 12 and 6 overall, 5 and 4 straight up, 6 and 3 against the spread on the road. Again, Celtics going this way, Heat coming down this way. Going to be a tough spot for tough spot for the Heat. But my ratings is getting back to one of the key things. My ratings is exactly how the line is made. Okay. These are ratings that you'll see on ESPN. Like, this is the best team. This is it? My ratings are the exact number. So you take my rating for the Miami Heat on the road is 36.5. My rating at home for the Celtics is 43.6. That's a 7.1 difference. Okay, the line has just gone to 7.5 basically when the officials were announced uh, for the game. So this line is now at 7.5. My line is 7.1. Um but with the lean to the to the Celtics, they look. You've got to say they've got all the momentum. Oh, definitely. Uh, so just a tough spot for the Heat. I don't have a bet on this game right now. We'll we'll see what happens. But I uh, be very tough to make a bet on this game. One side note on this one, Brogdon. Uh, my rating, by the way, is made with Brogdon out. Uh, Brogdon has been a zero factor since Game Two. Um, uh, games two, th uh, two, three, and uh, excuse me, three, four, and five. Brogdon was a combined one for 14 with two points. He's got a problem with the forearm, um, and he missed game six. Uh, so we'll see if he misses game seven. So he's been a non-factor basically the, the whole second half of the series, uh, especially for the three games that the Celtics have won. Uh, 
Um, their factor, their, their, their factors there is simple. Just as it is for Jimmy Butler and the Heat, they need Tatum to come up with a game. As good as Tatum's been, uh, the last two games, his three has been broken, just one for 14. Uh, Celtics, I think they only knocked down 25% of their threes. That's why they were in a, a dogfight the last game. They hit 40% of their threes tonight. They'll win and they'll cover. Yeah, have to look at the under tonight as well. Uh, for those of you guys who might want to be forcing a bet on this because game sevens are just tough to bet in general. I, I don't know uh, the last time I remember a game seven in the NBA going over. I mean, the Warriors Kings this year went under, Celtics 76ers went under, Celtics Heat last year went under, Celtics Bucks last year went under. If it's under or nothing all the way on this total, and uh, just as a whole, for the next 20 years of your sports betting, if you're betting game seven unders, you're going to be profitable. So, yes, it's a low number, but uh, just game seven, don't overthink it. Lay that under. Can't argue with you, Ben. Like I said, I was looking to bet under. I, I thought they would come with a total around 207. Mm -hmm. They came to 205 and knocked it right down. 204, 203 and a half, depending on your book now. Uh, under or nothing, just not enough room for me to make a bet. Guys, I'll say this over and over. Um, I need room. I need an edge. I don't bet for entertainment. If if you think, well, there's got a 51% chance that the Celtics are going to win. Well, that's that. That doesn't even overcome the juice. So you've got to overcome laying that 11 to 10. This is what How to Beat the Bookie is about. How to Beat the Bookie is about um, we get info that Cold Schmidt and Arenado are out of the lineup for the Cardinals. We take 150. The game goes down to the best you can take is 120. That's a 30 cent beat. That's an edge. Uh, obviously, all the edges aren't that big. I felt we had big edges yesterday with the Rays, with Arizona, uh, as I do when, whenever I make a bet. I don't see an edge in this game. So I get it. It's game seven. I get it that you want to bet, but I'm sorry. I'll, I'll bet some baseball games. And we have a lot of baseball games today, John. Uh, Memorial Day, so we got some day action, some early games. And this first one on the card here, NL West matchup, Rockies and D-backs. Now, last few seasons, you get this Rockies, D-backs. They're you know, two teams you both get beat up in this division, but a bit different look this time around. D-backs uh, have a true threat in this division now. Nelson on the mound, they've won his last three starts. Uh, he's been pretty good. Last two, allowed one run off four hits, 10 Ks, four walks over 11 and a third. And then you have Kaufman going. He's just had two career starts, and he's been nothing but roughed up. Ten runs, 13 hits, eight and two-thirds. Uh, this game, uh, oh, I'm usually looking for the dog typically in this matchup with the Rockies and the D-backs because usually they're going to split the matchups. But D-backs might dominate this, this season series a bit more. Lean here to Arizona, but it's a big number, not worth the price. Yeah, well, it's, it's, uh, shops are all over Arizona in this one. This one opened 165 on the overnight. Right now, we're looking at anywhere from 193 at Bet Online to 200 at Circa. They're just betting against Kaufman. He's just been absolutely crushed. Uh, Nelson, better his last couple of starts. Just take it with a grain of salt. One of those starts was against the A's. Um, Rockies coming off a real nice homestand. Uh, real, real nice homestand, 5-2, and two, beat the Mets a couple of times. But, again, that's at home. A little bit of a different team on the road, the Rockies. Uh, and just uh, I could only be interested in the dog at this price, but I've got no interest in Kaufman. I'll sit this one out. Then we have Pirates at San Francisco. Giants, they're returning from a nice uh, road trip. They've been red hot, 10-3 and three, their last 13. You have Pirates losing extras at Seattle yesterday. They have now lost 6 of 8, scoring just 3.6 runs per game. Pitching matchup, Rich Hill versus Desclafani. Uh, Desclafani, he was torched his last few starts, uh, not going as well. He was dominant earlier this season. He's been getting lit up. Rich Hill, he's coming off a rough start, five runs against the Rangers, best offense in baseball. Part of that, six shutout at Detroit. Back-to-back -back years where he's had reverse splits, really good on the road so far, 3-1, and 2.31 ERA. Now you're putting him in a road pitcher's ballpark, should help a bit more. This game to me is Pirates or nobody. You got the dog, uh, slight pitching edge to Descalfani, but I wouldn't give it too drastic. And uh question is, can the Giants cool off at all from their road trip? I, I see what, what Ben sees uh, with value with the Pirates. I did, they're, the, they're the cold team, and, and Giants are the hot team. And I don't want to buck that trend. Um, Descalfani, as Ben said, uh, he was 3-1 and one with a 2-1-3 ERA after throwing eight shutout innings at Houston on May 2nd. Since then... 0-3, 5-6-4. Uh, Rich Hill, I don't know how he's getting it done, but, but get it done, especially on the road. Uh, so I can see it there. But again, just not interested in this uh, uh, pirate team. 
with them being cold, San Fran hot. Look, uh, I'll, I'll jump on the Pirates when the price is right. We had them Friday night. They beat the Mariners. Uh, we, we came back with them on Saturday just because the number was insane with Castillo pitching, uh, two and change, uh, but they got beat there. And they were the sharp side play again yesterday. Just didn't see enough value in them. Same situation here. If there was a higher price with Hill, they would be worth the take. Uh, but I just don't think it's high enough for as cold as they are, as hot as San Fran is. I'll stay off this one. The Nationals at Dodgers. Miller for L.A. Uh, made his debut against Atlanta. Pretty good debut, especially against the Braves. One run in five innings, five Ks, one walk. We'll see what he has here against this red hot Nats lineup. Uh, come in, they're hitting just 284 this week after they were hitting in like 330 for the last few days. Uh, did some damage at Kansas City. Even yesterday, they lose the last game at KC. Uh, still out hit them, just uh, didn't get it done with runners in scoring position. They have Williams on the mound. They've won four of his last five starts. Uh, and the last two allowed six runs and 11 and two thirds. Been very serviceable. Uh, has had some road struggles, but this is uh, not to nobody. Dodgers, cross country flight. Does anyone get a day off tonight? Uh, definitely Nats are no one in this spot. Big number for a team who's hitting this well. Okay, this is what I could tell you guys um, about th this. I bet, I bet the Nationals in this game. So, uh, this weekend series, uh, the National Series, I caught the Nationals. Both games they won laid off the game that they didn't, being yesterday. And the reason why, uh, and well, first of all, Yesterday was the first game that the, the National had, hadn't scored at least four runs. They scored eight but four runs or more in their prior eight games. Okay, so yesterday when I got the lineups, they were sitting Abrams, Ruiz, and Candelario. It's the only reason I didn't bet them yesterday. Uh, that's the only reason they didn't score four runs. They didn't go with their full lineup. But I caught the Nationals in two of the three games that they won. I went against the Dodgers in two of the three games they lost. Bet against them Friday. Didn't bet Saturday when they won. Bet against them again Sunday. So both teams coming in. I'm riding perfect. Uh, just a heads up. I like the Nationals in this one. Um, guys, I want you to get the pens, the, the calculators out, whatever you're going to use. It, it's teaching time. Okay? So I, what I want you to do is I want you to picture, because if you look at my ratings, my ratings are based on if a team – uh, if I've got the um, Dodgers rate, I think maybe it's 107 at home. So if I, what, what, what 107 at home means to me was if they were to play 107, if they were to play 162 games at home against the average team, how many would they win? With their average pitcher against another average pitcher, how many would they win? And then we variate off of that. <coughs> Excuse me. So with that being said, if you think – uh, if the line is two to one, okay, the Dodgers have to win 108 of the 162. So let's say that um, this matchup, uh, Williams versus Miller, same scenario, Dodgers flying cross country, everything the same. They were going to play this game 162 times. Could the Dodgers win 108 of the 162? In other words, 108 and 54. This is how the number is made. If you take 108 to buy by 50 foot, it's two to one. OK, so to get to 230, where the number is now, basically between 230 and 240, the Dodgers would have to win 113 games. In other words, go 113 and 49. That equals to 231. Now, if you're if you're looking to lay the Dodgers, obviously you've they've got to win more games than that. So just how many games do you think this Dodger team's going to win? Uh, we talked about it from the beginning of the year. Dodgers won 111 games last year. We knew they weren't going to be the same team this year. Trey Turner was a big loss. He's going to start the year without Bueller. Some pitching questions. Um, but we said, so let's take 15 games off. Dodgers are still going to be a, a, a good team. They're still it's either them or San Diego. We thought, well, we don't know what's happened to San Diego. But they would be they would be first or second in their division, probably win the division. And we called it about 96 games. Ben, can you take a guess what pace they're on right now? How many games to win? Uh, a little over 100, correct? You know, 96, Is it 96 on the dot? But we called it 96. They're on pace right now. And, and all, to figure out pace, guys, just take the percentage uh, that, they're, that they're playing and multiply it by 162. So I believe they're playing 593 ball right now. Multiply it by 162, and you come to 96. Just, well, just where they, they are right now, just where we felt they should be. Um, Nationals, like I said, 
prior to yesterday, eight straight games, four at least four runs in each of those eight eight games. Um, ben told you hitting over 280 this week, third in the major leagues as a team, batting 266. They're getting it done with the bats. Uh, Nationals 12 and 13 on the road, scoring an average of 4.96 runs per game. They're better on the road than they are at home. Once again, that's where the value is. The Dodgers are supposed to win this game. The Dodgers are supposed to win this game. Uh, I'm gonna let's call it. I'm gonna call it 64 percent of the time, but not enough to to not take 205. That's what I took on the game. I like the Nationals in this spot. Yeah, it's, uh, I agree with you completely on the Nats there I and mean, what they're doing offensively. And uh, who knows, Dodgers would be surprised if some guys get a day off tonight uh, after well, the long trip. Probably out. Yeah. Uh, also, he leads the team in home runs and RBIs. They pulled him out of the game yesterday. He'll be going for an MRI today. I, I can't even imagine how that 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 hand that uh, hamstring's going to feel after the cross country trip. I'm imagining once he gets the day off, regardless today. Uh, again, he leads the team in home runs and RBIs. Then we have uh, Guardians at Baltimore. You know, Rutschman in this game. Allen versus Wells. Uh, Wells, he's been great. Uh, best whip, 0.84 in MLB. Last two starts, though, eight runs, five homers in 10 innings. Uh, he's been getting lit up those last couple of starts. One start versus Guardians last year, two runs in four innings. That was a win. He had a 2.64 ERA at home. Allen, uh, he's uh, had a handful of starts this year. Last two, split them against the White Sox, five runs in 11 and two-thirds. This is uh, Baltimore nobody, man. I mean, this Cleveland team really just not hitting. Wells definitely gets the pitching edge. I don't love that Rutschman's out of the lineup here. But uh, nonetheless, I don't think uh, O's are going to need too many runs to get past this Guardians team today. Would be Baltimore no one for me. Uh, I'm going to agree. I had no interest in this one, but this line keeps going down. Uh, if it goes down anymore, it's going to be the Orioles or nobody for me. Cleveland just can't score. Uh, even winning two out of their, th their three games, they come up. Uh, Ramirez hits the double, um, walk-off double yesterday. But uh, Cleveland stats, guys, they're hitting uh, 217 this week. Uh, they're last in scoring 3.42 runs per game and 28 hitting 226 for the year. Just not getting it done. Uh, as Ben said, Wolves has, has, has been really good, except these last couple of uh, games, the home run ball kind of got them. So you got to be a little careful for that. Uh, but it's Baltimore or nobody in this one. Let's see how low the line goes. Uh, if it if it gets down to minus one twenty five, I'm going to make a bet on the Orioles. And we have Rangers at Detroit and uh, massive pitching mismatch here with Eovaldi on the bump. He's been ridiculous uh, over his last five starts: four and zero, point eight six ERA, two complete games in there. One of them he won eight and two thirds, almost three complete games in there. And uh, this Detroit team. As Boyd going today, they won his last two starts, four runs and 10 and a third, been pretty good. Uh, home struggles, though, 0 and 3, 8.64 at home. Evaldi dominant on the road, 1.66. This is uh, Rangers or no winning, it's worth the run line. You got a guy who's just pitching out of his mind lately. And uh, the, the Rangers, they left these well, top scoring offense in MLB. Should be a day uh, for Rangers to put up some runs and have a comfortable win. Do you guys know I love uh, I love me some Detroit Tigers as a home dog. Same thing with the Rockies. Just can't pull the trigger in this one. As Ben Ben just rattled off all the stats for Texas, lights out pitcher against somebody who's not pitching well at home. They crush left-handers, which Boyd is. Um, so yeah, like I said, while uh, Tigers, great job at home, thirteen and eleven. Just can't pull the trigger on them. Texas coming off a loss yesterday. They'll show up with the right now the hottest pitcher in baseball. Yep, hottest pitcher. Then we have Twins at Astros. Gray started off that guy, the hottest pitcher in baseball. Last few starts haven't been as good. They've lost his last four. Uh, hasn't gone past six innings since April. Hasn't gone past five innings since April, excuse me. And uh, as far as France going for Houston, he had three really good starts. He was roughed up last time out. I'm sorry, three really good starts this year of his four starts. Was roughed up prior. He's coming off a bounce back start. Uh, he had that quality start against Milwaukee. This is slight lean here to... Uh, Astros, I mean, Astros is getting it done. What is it, 14-3 and three, the last 17? This is that Houston team that we expect to see at the start of the season. They get Altuve back. They're getting some groove. Jose Abreu hits his first home run against Oakland. Uh, Astros team kind of going in the right direction now. Said it with about the Dodgers a few weeks ago when they get in these uh, rhythms. Just don't go against it. No reason to. Same thing with Houston today. No reason to go against it. Too hot right now. No reason. Uh, Twins also beat them two or three earlier in the year. 
But Astros won all six last year, including the three in uh, in Houston, 21-3, a combined 21-3. As Ben said, Gray was 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 fantastic early in the season. But in all his starts, he's only got three quality starts. And as he said, the last four, he hasn't gone past, the, he hasn't made it through the sixth inning since April 20th. Uh, France, three or four good starts. Those are his first starts. The only thing that scares me a little bit, the one start that he was crushed against the Cubs, it was it was at Houston. Uh, but it's Houston to nobody in this. Buxton, uh, best hitter for the Twins. He's sitting out today. Houston to nobody. Just waiting to see for the Houston lineup. Didn't get that lineup yet and where that line goes later in there during the day. We have Angels at White Sox. Angels got swept at home by Miami, scoring just 2.3 runs per game. It hit 228 last week. Canning versus Kopech. How about Kopech? Last two starts, 15 shutout innings, 19 Ks, one walk, absolutely dominant. Uh, was against those AL Central teams struggling to hit in KC and Cleveland, but nonetheless, good numbers there. Uh, he did get roughed up by the Angels last year, four runs and five and a third. Canning coming off his first quality start this year for the Angels. He had seven shutout innings versus Boston. This is uh, an Angels team who's not hitting, a White Sox team who they, they did damage in that series with Detroit, but still just hitting 204 this week. Lean a little bit to the under here. I uh, don't want to bet a uh, part of this Angels team right now. This is about that time of year that starts to struggle, and getting swept by Miami at home is not a good sign. No, that that, that you can't let that happen. Just the, the bats went cold. Uh, don't want to get a cold team. Same thing with White Sox, though. We keep talking about the White Sox. They look like they were about to turn around and, and just get out of that level of one of the worst teams, uh, and then they just fall down. Kopech, some some nice games, but I guess I don't, those his last two starts are Cleveland and KC. Ben, am I correct? Yep, Cleveland and KC. So um, not not the powerhouse teams uh, to say the least. But uh, like the way Kopech is pitching, he obviously gets the pitching edge. Just don't know if it's enough for White Sox to be this big a favorite. Uh, always remember that other team has got Otani and Trout in that lineup. Uh, maybe a little bit high of a number, but that's due to, to the fact how Kopech is pitching. Uh, I'll stay off this one. Then we have Yankees at Seattle. Herman for the Yankees will be making his first start since May 16th. He got that suspension for the sticky substances. Uh, one start for the Samaritans last year, two runs in five innings. He's had some road struggles this year. Then you have Miller, who is just a phenomenal start to his career. 0.51 whip. He's had all five starts for quality starts, four runs, 31 and a third, 28 Ks, five walks. Just ridiculous start to his career. Clear pitching edge to me for him, the way he's throwing the ball right now already. And then uh, the Yankees coming back from a, from a East Coast uh, homestand. Now they're going to go cross-country flight. Rizzo, he was banged up. We'll see what's going on with him. Seattle been taking care of business so far on this homestand, coming off a rally from behind against Pittsburgh. Uh, lean here to the Yankees just with this price. I really don't want to go against Miller, but uh, price is getting a little bit big there. If I uh, were to go out, if we go higher at all, could be interested in the Yankees, but as far as this game, staying away. Well, the first thing we got to find out is make sure Rizzo's in the lineup today. Uh, he left the game yesterday with a little problem with the wrist. Now, Boo said he's fine uh, and he should be, He's and he's likely to be in the lineup. Just want to make sure he's in the lineup. Uh, I would have no interest in the Yankees uh, against this kid Miller right now if, if Rizzo's not in the lineup. Would lean to the, to the Yankees a little bit. Uh, always tricky. Uh, Herman, we're not coming off an injury, but gone for the last 10 days because of the suspension. So a little tricky there. Again, Seattle at home. The Yankees making the cross-country trip uh, to Seattle. They played yesterday uh, coming off that series with San Diego. So lead to the Yankees. Not high enough the number yet, and even, wouldn't even think about it unless it got Rizzo in the lineup. And Royals at St. Louis. Cardinals have done some damage in this matchup. They won eight of ten meetings for the last five in St. Louis. Uh, Stoutmout versus Wainwright going to be a bullpen day for Kansas City. Wayno, four starts this year, gave up four runs in each of them. He's had some struggles. Uh, did give up, uh, did have a good out against Casey last year, seven shutout innings. This is, uh, you know, prove it time a little bit for Wainwright. What do you got left in the tank? Uh, KC's coming in, struggling a little bit. You got to have a big outing at home tonight if you're Wainwright. Lean to KC. I mean, Wainwright's been that bad. I don't want to be betting a Kansas City bullpen game. Cards do own this matchup a little bit. Um, but steady giving up four to five runs a game, That that's a problem. Yeah, look, obviously uh, Wainwright's best uh, days are behind him. He's coming towards the end of the rainbow. Um, just, just not getting the job done. Uh, shops were all over this game earlier. They took the price. Uh, game open 195 on the overnight. 
Now you're looking at anywhere from 175 from Bet Online to 180 at circa. Uh, I'm I'm against the uh, the Cardinals with Wainwright. Cardinals hot streak that's over. They got yeah. red hot for a little while. Uh, not so much right now. Uh, just not ready to back KC. Uh, if it's not for Oakland, they are the worst team in, in the majors with a bullpen game. Um, Cardinals should get to them uh, to 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 that bullpen. Uh, you get you got a couple of the best hitters in Major League Baseball there. This is the game the Cardinals need. Uh, Sharps are thinking the other way. They're, they're liking KC. I'm not pulling the trigger on KC, and I got no interest in laying this price with an over the hill uh, Wainwright. Yeah, it could be an overplay there. Uh, St. Louis, I imagine, gets to that KC bullpen, and we'll see if Wayno has anything old time stuff. Uh, Rays at Cubs, also another game leading to the over in this one. It's Bradley versus Stroman. Stroman's been great. Nine of his 11 starts are quality starts. Uh, last two, three runs in 14 innings. He did get rucked up by the Rays last year, eight runs in four and a third. And then it's Bradley going for Tampa. They've actually lost his two starts since coming back to the rotation. Uh, this is a uh, race team coming in red hot up that series with the Dodgers. They've won four or five, scoring 7.6 runs per game, hitting 285 this week. And they are, though, struggling a little bit on that last road trip they went on. They went just three and six. Cubby's playing really bad baseball right now, hitting just 210 this week. Uh, would be Rays or nobody as far as the side. I can't be interested in the Cubs, even with the massive pitching edge here with Stroman. Uh, just the offense, what's going on here. I mean, in that s- series, the Cubs are coming off of with the Reds. They gave up nine runs per game. Yes, uh, Stroman, the bad history there with Tampa last year. Landed the over in this one. Rays last nine games going over eight. I see it happening again today. Yeah, they opened up this one a little bit high, minus 125. Uh, and they're going to make you pay uh, if you want to be on the Tampa Bay Rays. And that's just as simple as that. Uh, this could be a little bit of a letdown, look, crazy game yesterday. We were on the Rays. You guys uh, – you get, I don't know if you guys know that because we don't do the podcast. If you're, false, if you're a follower uh, on Instagram or if you had to beat the bookie member, we gave out the race. A crazy game, up and down, 11-10 win. Uh, they take two or three from the Dodgers. A uh, potential World Series matchup. Uh, now they come to the Cubs who just went ice cold, looked good early in the season, and have just basically fallen off the cliff. Yes, Stroman has got a huge pitching advantage, but uh, this Rays team could get on it. The only thing I said, like I say, it's uh, it looks like they're betting on the Cubs for the value at home with Stroman, and maybe if, uh, Tampa Bay comes in a little flat after that early morning uh, big win over the Dodgers yesterday. Not interested in this game. I'm passing it. Then we have uh, Braves at Oakland. Last game on the card here. For, forget for a second. This A's team is the worst team to ever step on a baseball field in MLB history. Just look at the spot in this game going on today. You have Braves coming off of – a long – well, first off, they played last night. So they're coming out of a Sunday night game. Cross-country flight, Atlanta to Oakland. They have a pitcher going today who is Soraka. Hasn't pitched since 2020, over 1,000 days since he's last pitched in an MLB start. And uh, to top it all up, Braves coming off a playoff revenge series Sunday night baseball game. So spot is all Oakland. But do you dare bet this A's team really tough to do it? Uh, they get Blackburn back today. He had a finger injury earlier this season. Uh, he had final rehab start, one run in five innings. He was good last year. He was arguably their ace last season. Did horrible at home, though. Uh, crazy reverse split last year. He had an 8.31 home ERA, nearly sub two on the road. I'm, I'm not going to say I lean to Oakland, but spot is there for the A's. It's uh, any other team there, I'm betting the A's, uh, the betting that spot today. Spot screams Oakland. I just uh, I've been saying this uh, every day uh, on Instagram Live and here on the YouTube uh, channel. It just that this is a historically bad team. Mm-hmm. Um, it gets worse and worse every day. It's now an 11 game losing streak, uh, scoring 1.7 runs per or 1.6 runs per game. Batted 171 for the week. I mean, uh, you know, th- these are just ridiculous numbers. They're 29 scoring 3.44 runs and their last hitting 220 for the year. No, I, I just can't back them. Uh, don't don't know what we're going to get out of Blackburn, his first game back also. So while, yeah, in, normal, in a normal spot, a Sunday night game, cross-country trip, just what Penn said, coming off your uh, playoff revenge, hmm. perfect spot, uh, especially with the pitcher. <laughs> That's pitched in a thousand things. Anybody but Oakland, but it's Oakland. They can't score. They, they got no bullpen. You can't expect – uh, Blackburn to pitch. What's he going to give you? Five tops? Uh, sorry, can't take them. Yeah, can't do it. Uh, we'll see if Oakland can snap the losing streak. We'll see what happens. 
That's the uh, Memorial Day baseball card. Obviously, we have a. I want to inject this right now. So just yeah. take in your head, guys. Uh, we took Nationals plus 205. So think of the stats I gave on the Nationals at plus 205 and the stats that I just gave uh, A's right now. You could take uh, 210, pretty much 210, let's call it. 212 at Circa, 212 at Jazz, 212 at Bet Online. So let's call it 212, okay? How much better does the Nationals sound as a bet compared to the stats we just rolled off for, for the Oakland A's? And then that's why I feel there's value in Washington as opposed to no value uh, as big as the line is and as bad as the situation is for Atlanta. Just wanted to stick that in, Ben. Yeah, of course. Value, value, value. You guys hear us talk about it all the time. If you guys want to hear us talk about it more, go to the How to Beat the Bookie website or go download the app, How to Beat the Bookie. You can get that in the App Store or Google Play. Get breakdowns for all these games. Like John said, just one bet so far today. That could change. Uh, and if we want to see those, go ahead and go get the app or sign up on the website. John, anything else? Uh, pretty good card coming up today. Yep. One bet today, guys. Friday, we had eight. Saturday, we had six. Yesterday, we had two. It, it all depends. You know, I've, we've heard a lot of crying. How could you not bet game seven? Because I'm not looking to watch it for entertainment. I'm looking to make money. I don't, I don't see a big enough edge. On to, to actually give it out as a play. I have a lean to the Celtics just because of the spot there. Uh, when the official came and it was announced that Scott Foster have a little more of a lean, just uh, not enough to pull the trigger on that. We I look for spots. Like I said, the Nationals gave you the reasons why that's a bet. Uh, we talked about it yesterday. J Rays, Diamondbacks, I'll bet a favorite if there's value there. Value, value, value. That's all it's about. Uh, making some money, not entertainment. But look, if you don't have a bet on this game, this could even be a good game to watch. Uh, game six was great. Mm -hmm. uh, but if history is made today, first uh, team after 150 teams have gone down 0-3 to come all the way back. Yeah, apparently a good amount of those 0-4 Red Sox are coming into attendance today too. Johnny Dame and everything else. So we'll see uh, that, that Boston can repeat history. Uh, well, other than that, guys, enjoy the holiday. If you have the day off, uh, again, thank you to all the men and women who have served. Any of you guys are watching. And, uh, John, let's make some money. Yeah, happy Memorial Day, everybody. Let's make some money.